So now we're going to start with radiosity. Radiosity is very easy. Basically, radiosity is the calculation of light in the scene. So wherever we have light coming from, like the windows or the spotlights or even this lamp, the computer is going to calculate a lighting solution for us. So we can either click on the shortcut radiosity icon here or go to render, start radiosity. The radiosity dialog box will pop up and under render method we've got three um, we've got three options here. Continue until we press stop, stop after one time, or after however many amount of times, and stop running after a certain amount of minutes. Um, for this time, for this one, I'm going to use until I press stop because that will just allow me to judge the quality of the um, render. Um, under precision, we've got normal, high, and user defined. Normal is the fastest. High is uh, about one and a half to two times slower, but will you, but will give you better shadow definition. And user defined is for when you become quite an advanced user and you know how subdivision works. Uh, sky method, indoor and outdoor. We have indoor selected because we are obviously doing an interior. If we're doing an exterior, we would have outdoor selected. And we can just click OK. Um, I'm going to let it go and stop it when I think it looks good enough. As you can see, it's just doing our sky pre preparation. And then it's going to start doing all of its passes. Okay, so as you see, after each pass, the image will start to get a lot better. It starts off very dark, and as it improves, the it, the scene um, light in the scene increases. There you go. You can see the light starting to increase, and with the time comes the um, render quality. Okay, so I've just stopped that after five minutes. And we can see quite a nice lighting solutions popped up. So now all we have to do is bring up our light adjustment panel. And then just give our scene its final touches. We can see that that background image there is way too exposed by the light. So what we're going to do is just go up to it, select it, and drop the brightness down to 0.4. And if we do a partial ray trace by clicking on the partial ray trace icon here, we can see that the image is now way less bright than it was. I'm actually going to drop that by one more and make it 0 0.3. 0 0.3. Okay. I also just want to check out the reflection on the floor. And... Uh, we just take a look at this floor, do a partial ray trace. Okay, we'll see that it's nice and reflective. But what I want to do is add a little bit of texture to that reflection. So what I'm going to do is just select it using my material editor. Under bump, I'm going to go to texture and go to browse. And I'm just going to choose a random texture. Ideally, you, you want a bump, a bump texture to be um, a grayscale image because what it, it does is it creates the illusion of any raises or depressions on the surface. Um, it gives you quite a nice effect. And reflection, oh, that looks good. So if we do another partial ray trace over that, you can now see that sort of matte effect coming out on the tiles, which actually looks really cool. So now, I think that's basically all I needed to do. I'm then going to go and save a render now. So I'm just going to choose a, an angle. So let me just navigate to this corner. And uh, let's go back a little bit here. Okay. If you find stuff getting in the way, like this uh, bit of curtains in my way, you can always go to Object, Hide Object, and just hide it. I just have to go a little bit more back. So I'm actually just going to hide this whole wall. So I'm going to hide the window there, and I'm going to hide this curtain. 
camera icon, we're going to render, save image, and we can go into the renders folder, and we can call this render1, let's call it render1, save. And here under image size, you've got your various print output options, so A4 to A2, and email sizes, and then going onto your megapixels. Just click 2 megapixels. Um, then you have anti-aliasing, uh, pixel point and quality. Basically, anti-aliasing is the smoothing out of edges. So if you take a look at the edge of this chair, for example, you see that it's quite jagged. Anti-aliasing will smooth it out. Um, if we go to ray trace, that's basically controlling the amount of reflections in the per object in this, um, in this scene. And uh, so leaving it on 4, 3, and 5 are usually good, quick options to use. Just make sure shadow prediction is ticked. And you'll also see that the output methods we have are snapshot, 3D glasses, and panorama. We're only going to have snapshot selected because we're doing a still render. Click OK. And you'll see that these little render buckets start going across the screen. As it renders, you can see the various effects that are start to appear like the IES lights over there on the wall there, some reflections in the TV screen and on the mirror that we created earlier. Um, you're going to see that nice reflection on the floor start coming out with that bump effect. There we go, that nice bump effect on the tile. And there our render is done. Okay, great. Now we can just move on to another um, angle. Save an additional render. So I'll just choose this angle, for example. Once again, go to save image. Call this render 2. And we'll just save it out as 2 megapixels again. So you also notice a difference between the IES effect and the normal spotlight effect. IES looks a lot better, but one of the disadvantages is it increases um, render time, which is why you should only use it on perimeter lights, that, uh, such as ones that are along run along the walls and um, don't use too many of them in your scene. So that bump map on the floor might be a bit too strong but that's okay for now. You can also go on to do renders like um, hand view renders. So to do that you just go to top view and uh, we can also go and set the background by going to render Set background, so we'll set that to white. Click OK. And just go object to show all to bring back the uh, wall and window back in. Now we can save a nice plan view. So just save that image. Call this plan. And uh, let's make it 2 megapixels. Click OK. So these are also very nice things to give to clients. Okay. And then you can also do an isometric render. So if you go to 3D, and you just want to hide a wall or some of these uh, recesses here, you can just go Object, Hide Object, select the parts, select this, this wall, and that window, and maybe this door. Right click to hide them. And now we can just render that off as well. And I think that basically wraps up this uh, this demo of how to create a lounge in from using um, 2D design. Uh, next video we're going to look at is creating a, a lounge from modeling. Um, we'll look at a few modeling methods there. 
So I think this is, went pretty well for the first uh, Burn Space um, video demo. And uh, feel free to comment and hopefully we'll put a, a lot more out there. Thanks very much.